Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're continuing with this tutorial of this border collie and today we're going to start on his chin and come down this um, patch of fur here as we start working our way across to finish him. Um, so we are, the main focus is going to be the white fur on the chin um, and part of the chest and obviously we do have this patch of black fur if we get to it later on. As usual, everything you need will be listed in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to go in with my putty eraser and just lift some of this graphite. Because we're dealing with white fur, we don't want this graphite to be showing through our layers. I'm then going to take, as usual, uh, one grey one as our base. And we're just going to add this as a base layer. Now that we have got a lot of stray white hairs, I'm going to ignore them for now. We're going to add them later. And I'm just going to come across here. Now I haven't removed the black, uh, the graphite lines across here. Um, they're going to be dark, so I'm not too worried about them. It's just where, like here, where the fur is going to meet the edge of the paper. Where we want that to be white, I'm erasing there, lifting away. So I'm just going to add this base layer across the top of this chin. And again, just lifting away those graphite lines. Where I can, um, that hasn't fully lifted there, so I'm just going to go... This, this will get darker anyway, and I know that sounds scary because we're doing white fur, um, but how we did here and we've got it quite dark, it will be the same here. Having the darks already in is going to help quite a bit. So let's come across here. Again, I've not erased those graphite lines because they're going to be gone over in uh, with dark colours. If you have pressed too hard with your graphite, um, I would recommend that you erase it. Um, especially if you don't know if you're going to be able to cover it with your pencil marks. If you just lift away some of that graphite, um, it won't show through. Or maybe you might even like the look of the graphite shining through. That's completely fine. Right, I'm not coming all the way down yet. We're just going to focus on this bit below the mouth. First of all, um, I'm going to go in with my walnut brown. I just need to sharpen this. Okay, I've zoomed you in a bit, so I'm hoping that you can see this a bit more clearly. Clearly, wow, words. <laughs> um, so I've got the walnut brown and we've got a nice sharp point and I'm just gonna follow the direction of this fur and add this using fairly light pressure. You can see how it's just touching the paper, just leaving a few marks and I'm just following where these dark furs, fur lines are. And this is just going to give us a nice base layer for under the dark colours as we come on. Also going to go in with a purple, um, which is going to help shine through when we go over again. So it's all about layers, as usual. Lots of layers, lots of colours, to create the colours that we want to see shining through. So we've got the brown along there. Um, I want... Um, the, um, yeah, we'll use this. This is the kaput mortem, and I'm just not using this all over, so I can see a hint of like a purpley pinkish tone there, and down here. A little bit there, okay. And then I'm going to get the Payne's Grey uh, This is the Payne's Grey And I'm going to start coming from this bottom lip Over these colours And this is just going to help blend this fur into that lip and make it all look like it's part of, part of one. 
And again, I'm following this reference photo. I'm seeing where there's some like dark shadows and lighter shadows. It is quite blurred in the reference photo, this section. So don't worry if it's not accurate. We don't need a huge amount of details. And again, it's not huge, huge pressure. We're just kind of mapping everything in before we go in with the harder pressure. So if you can hear the wind, it's quite windy today. We've All the snow's melted now. We've had rain overnight. All the snow's gone that we had yesterday. <laughs> and now we're, we're left with some winds again. Right, and then I'm coming just to it down there. Okay, and then I'm going to get the black. And we're just going to make some of these a bit more darker and defined. And again, going into the bottom of the slip. Where I need to, just to help with that blending. Also going to help darken this lip line. It's not quite dark enough. Just going to sharpen this. It's not quite sharp enough. So this, you can see the end is quite blunt. Um, I need this to be a sharper point so that I can get some really nice sharp points in. Um, which is why I'm constantly saying sharpen your pencils. This is quite sharp for like base layers, but not sharp enough for the details. Okay, so I should now be able to get some nice details. Constantly turning my pencil so I keep this sharp edge. You can see now how I can just come in and really get these defined lines where I want them. And then when it starts getting a bit blunter, we can go in and blend it with this lip line. And then I'm just going to take it along here. And I'm using circular, circular motions to help with the blending here. Because that lip is quite smooth, so we want to keep that smooth look. But we want his... This bit to obviously be defined as fur. Um, I'm going to go back in with a Payne's grey just to help define again some of these areas over that black and then that lip. Right, I'm going to get the um, warm grey. I think. Uh, yeah, one grey three. Sort of. So I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm looking at this tooth and I can see that there's a darker line here. So I'm coming down and this bit is quite dark. So by measuring this, I know how far down I need this dark line to go. So I think this is about right, but we need it all to be dark. Um, so it's going to be just a few more layers to build up along here. And again, I'm just measuring from that tooth and then that's sort of coming here. You see, we're going to get quite dark. And I'm pressing medium pressure with the um, pencil here. It's going to be quite dark. And I'm making sure I'm blending into those dark colours so it looks nice and smooth. That the transition between these colours is nice and smooth. So I'm going to go back to my um, Payne's Grey and I'm just going to bring this down ever so slightly into that warm grey. So I'm tapering my edges. So when I say tapering, we're pressing hard and I'm lifting as I'm coming to this warm grey. And that's really going to help you get those softer edges. You're just tapering those lines. So now you can see how much further down we've come with this darker area. So I'm just going to do the same here, just going to lower this area. Some pink tones that we need to get in. Um, and then I'll go back to the black just to darken these lines up again. And again, I'm referring to the teeth if I need to where some of these darker shadows are. 
and line it all up with the teeth. Again though, you don't have to be accurate with all these dark lines. It's going to change from photo to photo and this photo here is quite blurry. It's not as clear as I would have liked. Um, obviously the dog's panting in this photo, mouth wide open, so it is going to be moving all the time. Um, here's darker. As long as you've got that resemblance of what the fur is doing and it's going in the correct way, it's all going to look realistic. Um, okay, so we've got the bottom fur in there, so now we need to start darkening up this chin. I'm just going to make sure that this warm grey is covered here. I've noticed I've missed a little area. Right, so we've got the base layer in and we're going to do the bit that I think scares a lot of people um, and we're going to use the metallics. Now I like the metallics for white fur because when they're mixed with the greys they create some really lovely tones and I'm going to show you how we do it right now. So I've got the gold from the polychromos and I'm just very lightly adding it along here. Now if you don't have the metallics, um, just skip the step where we're adding the metallics. You, the, you don't necessarily need them, it's just that I like the colours that it gives. And by me including them in this tutorial, I'm hoping it gives you the confidence to use them more within your own work. I don't use them for like metallics, for like metal. Um, I'll use them in the metal work, but I'm not using them for the metallic look that they give. I'm just using them for this colour. So I'm adding this gold. Blending again into those areas. I'm going to get the warm grey too. And I'm just going to blend fairly hard of pressure over the top of this gold. And you should start to see that it's giving us this really nice colour. And this is going to act as like highlighted white area. I don't know. Maybe you don't necessarily need the golds. You could just go straight in with a warm grey too. It's just an effect I like. Um, I'm going to keep the panes grey near me so that we can just keep blending this darker fur into this lighter bit. And then come back in with a warm grey too to help with that blend. So if you compare this grey to like this grey, you can see there's a difference within the tonal value and the colour of the grey. So this is a warm grey three and two area. This is gold and warm grey too. So there is a there is a difference. It, and it is something that I like using within my work. I, I, I do like it. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to come again with the warm grey too, down here, fairly out of pressure. Um, I'm going to get the cold grey too, just over the top here, just to give a hint of this bluish tone that I can see. <laughs> Good pink in there. Okay, right. Then back to the uh, base layer, so I've got my warm grey warm, and we're going to start coming across here. Now we do have a bit of a greenish tone, and we're going to include it, but we're not going to have it as vibrant. Oh, this isn't a reason that we've done it. Oh, no. It's not going to be as vibrant as it is in the reference photo, and you will see how we do that. So this is um, warm grey warm. Base layer. I also need to lift that graphite because this is in the lighter area. Okay, so I'm going to come in first of all, the warm grey free along this bottom chin. And we need to blend into this bit here. 
Now remember the the fur on the chin is short, so we're not using long pencil strokes. Using fairly short pencil strokes to build it up. And I'm following the fur direction again, so it's coming up and round. We're making sure we're getting this roundness to the chin. And then I'm going to use uh, one grey three. Is this free? Uh, this is one grey two, sorry. I thought it looked a bit light. <laughs> um, so this is one grey three. So I, I do want one grey. Uh, that was one grey two, sorry. I do want one grey three. Um, I want a little bit to just start darkening. And you get that gold again. And this gold's going to help us with this transition into like the greenish tones as well. Just blend that with the one grey too. So whenever I use the metallics, I always blend over them. I don't just leave them sitting as the top layer. Um, and then I'm going to get one grey free along the bottom of this chin. So you can see how dark we're going already. Even though this is going to be white fur, we've, we've gone pretty dark already. Um, but it will all make sense. <laughs> so I'm going to bring this warm grey free along the bottom of this chin. And this is going to be our shadow. And this will look really dark for now. But once we start bringing in the highlights along here, it's all going to balance out. So it's all about like trusting the process. Like I know you at the moment it looks really dark. Trust the process, we're gonna get lighter. And that's just by manipulating the colours. Um, I'm then gonna get my gold here. I'm then going in with the copper. So the copper is going to give us this like a different tonal value to the um, the gold. Again, very light pressure over this one grey free area. And can you see the difference in the tonal values? And then I'm going to take the one grey two and blend over the top. And down here. <laughs> Just get that um, Payne's grey again. So I'm gonna get a cold grey six. Um, I'm use paint, yeah, cold grey six here instead. And if you want to bring in some of the white highlights, um, got the slice tool, and we can just come in over the top. And very gently scrape away some of this pigment. <laughs> be very subtle will the um the slice tool there and then I've got um a white and then I can just come in just there. Right, let's keep um, going. So we need the base layer again along the top here. Let me get this mouth in. So this is one, one grey one as the base. And 
And this is sort of like where it's going to blend into that darker section there. You can mark that out. Okay, so base layer down, right, we are going to go in with the warm grey 2 first, so you can use the warm grey 2 as your base as well, um, because I'm not quite sure yet, I think some of this I want to stay with the warm grey 1, I've used that as my base layer. It's all about what, what you would prefer, so this bit is kind of... So this is going to be like a pinkish tone here. I've got the one grey two there. I'm going to get the um, beige red. Um, this might be too light. Yeah, it's too light. Um, so we'll get the cinnamon. Um, and use the cinnamon here. We've just got this like saliva stain, that's why we've got this pinkness. Completely natural for the dogs to have this. And I'm going to blend, I want a bit more, if you have the granite rose in Pablo's, um, I would use that. Um, that'll give you this nice pink tone um, because I'm just using the polychromos um, sorry I'm looking for uh, I'm going to grab the pink matter lake so I've got a pink matter lake and I'm very gently just going over the top of this cinnamon Adding a bit of a pinker tone um, there. Oops. And then I'm going to get the one grey one and just go over the top, help blend these together. And then I'm going to get the one grey four and we're going to blend this lip very, very gently. A few little lines coming into this pink fur. It's not as prominent as like here, but we still want this blend. And then that's coming across into this lip here. Which we'll be able to get the um, Payne's Grey again. To help get that nice and blended, which then means this a bit further down like so okay we're gonna get um the gold again and i'm just following this marking so from sort of from this edge of the tooth i've got the gold there coming down and that's going to blend down here and then it's creating like a triangular shape here so I'll, as you can see i've literally just points the reference and then look at the shape that this color is creating and then it's just coming across here with this gold also got a bit of pink in there so i'm going to get the cinnamon again I'm just going to bring in these pinkish colours that I can see. There. And then I'm going to get the one grey too. And I'm going to go over where I've applied this gold. Now this is blending into the lighter grey, white one grey one tone. So I'm just going to very lightly taper my edges again 
So pencil down and lift as I'm coming to that edge. And then I'm going to get the warm grey one and I'm just going to go over this. And that's going to help them there blend there. Just get the warm grey free and again just taper into that warm grey too where you've got any harsh edges. I want this to look quite soft. There is a harsh edge here so you can see where the dark fur is overlapping. Uh, the light, this is light fur and this is the underneath of the chin. But I still want a bit of a smooth blend. It's not a very harsh line but you can see that there is a line there. So I'm just going to blend upwards like so. So I've just zoomed you out a bit um, because we were really focused in on this area. And as a whole, as this piece, you can see now that this is starting to look like the shadowed area. So even though it looks really dark that we're going in with, it's starting to come together. Uh, this is why I've just zoomed you in, just to show that even though we are going quite dark, um, it is starting to apply to the whole picture of this piece. Right. So I've got the one grey one again and I'm coming across this top area again because we're going to blend it into some darker fur. So I'm just going to add this as a base layer. And I'm doing this top bit because this bit's going to also be dark. So we'll get this area in and then we can blend downwards. So one grey one just to help. As the base layer helps move out the two for the paper. Right, I'm going to just grab that cinnamon again, just a little bit along here. And then there's a little touch along here. I'll get the, um, I'm just going to get the black because it's very, very slight lines just to show that this is blending into this fur. They're not very long lines, very short pencil strokes along here. Um, and then get the one grey far as we come in where this black fur is. And I'm just going to add a few lines where this fur is sort of mixing. Now we're not doing the black fur yet. I may put a little smidgen of it in. Um, which is why I've just used the lightest one grey. Well, it's not the lightest colour we could have used, but one grey four is why, what we've used here. And that's where the fur is going to start blending. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right, and then we get the one grey two. Again, I'm following this fur direction. And I'm applying a bit of a harder pressure. I'm going to get some of this sh shading into this white fur. And go over that dark patch there. And then the warm grey too. Here. I'm going to get uh, the gold very lightly, so I'm holding it halfway up and I'm just glazing that over some of this warm grey two area. Not a lot, but you just want this hint. And by holding it hard and... Oh, let's start again. <laughs> by holding the pencil halfway up, the by holding the pencil halfway up, you're going to not be able to press as hard and it's just going to glaze over the top of that one grey two. Get the cold grey one again and I'm just going to go over the top of all this. Harder pressure and I'm just helping to blend these areas together. Um, and I get that one grey two just in any areas where I just feel it needs to be a bit more smoother. Maybe a few darker hairs coming down there. Okay, and then we just have this middle section here. So, um, again, I've got the gold, very light pressure along here. The one grey two, 
over the top of that gold. And then the one grey one to help with... Oh, there's a mucky mark on that. That's not wanted. Um, to help with the blending. Okay, so let's get this darker shadowed area in. So I'm just going to sharpen my one grey one. Um, so I've got the one grey one, which I really need to put into a pencil extender. <laughs> and again, following that fur direction along the bottom here. Now this is going to start blending down into the neck. So you need to be aware of that. Gonna start so we have this part of the chin is shorter fur and as we so shorter fur here and as we come down here the fur is getting longer as we're getting into like the chest hair. So I'm just gonna map in how this fur is getting longer. Like so. This is just base layer here, so we need to just get this little bit of chin done. Making sure that my base layer is nicely placed down. Right, so uh, one grey free. Along here, and I'm pushing it into the shadows. Uh, pushing it into the highlighted area, so we're saying this is the highlighted area. Pushing upwards. And then coming down in other areas. So up and down. And by doing this, it's going to look natural. So I kind of do it along the whole bit, like up and then down, up and then down. It's going to just create those natural shadowed areas. Um, and it's all along here, and then it's going to come down into that neck there. So I'm just going to apply along here and then it's going to start lightening off as we get down here and longer strokes And I'm going to get the gold again along here. And that's going into a darker patch. So I'm going to the one grey far where I've not marked in some of this darker fur of that marking. And then back to the gold. Pencils underneath my elbow. <laughs> that cord's going to come down here. Under this here. And then I'm going to get the copper. And the copper's come in. Here and then along over the top of that gold in areas. And then get the one grey two to go over the top. And I'm coming back over this section and then we're going back over. Just to help with all this blending. Right, so this is going to look really dark. 
that we're going to start getting more of the detail in underneath here and it's all going to start sort of working together so if i do the zoom out of the whole piece you can see it's looking quite dark at the moment but we're going to start bringing in this part of the chest fur and his neck so i've got my one gray two and i am going to apply it underneath where this dark fur is now we do have so this white fur is going to be crossing over into the dark fur we're going to use the slice tool so we're going to need a lot of layers down but don't worry um if you don't have the slice tool don't worry if you don't um if you miss some of the white hairs you can sort of move around them like this um and add them in over the top or you can use the indenting method uh, get the indenting tool over the top and that will help uh, keep these whites. So I'm just using this as a base layer. I'm going to do it in sections, I think, just to help. So this is going to be like one section that we're just going to work on now. Now you're going to have to be careful that you're not mixing in with your chin. Um, I have a clear definition here, so I can see well that it's warm grey. One grey three going into a one grey two, and I know that it's this one grey two section that I need uh, to be dark. It's going to be the black fur. And again, I am following the fur direction somewhat. <laughs> I'm not too fussed about the base layer. Now you can see the base layer of one grey two is a lot darker than um, one grey one would be. Okay, so I'm going to get the um, dark sepia along this edge first of all. And again, just tapering the edges we want this to look nice and smooth and there's like a bit of fur here and a whisker here so I'm just gonna gently add that in very light pressure if I want to remove it I can and again like there's bits of fur so I'm just roughly mapping them in don't have to be accurate just want that sense of movement in his fur. Um, I'm going to get the dark indigo and I'm going to apply the dark indigo across all this base layer. Now with the dark indigo I really am going to be focusing on the fur direction. So I'm constantly looking at this reference photo. So it's coming this way. And then that bit's sort of coming down here. And I'm just taking, I'm not going to cover all of this dark sepia with this dark indigo. Just going to blend it in together. Making sure I've got the edge of this chin. Just going to sort of use sh circular motions there. And then back to the fur strokes. And the fur lines here are quite long. He has got long fur here. You want to keep that impression of the longer fur. Um, and then I'm going to take the Payne's Grey. And just do the same over the top here.
going to need quite a few layers of this Payne's Grey, but we're going to go in with a black and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I've got the black and I'm just going to very lightly go in with this black where I know it's going to be darker and I'm going upwards underneath this chin so that the chin looks like it's on top of this patch of fur which it is so we want it to look like it is in our drawing as well and that's coming down here and that's the patch here so this sort of area here is quite dark just gonna black and then it's kind of dark here as well so we've used sort of medium pressure so far we've just mapped out colors mapped out fur direction and now it's sort of we're coming onto the detailed areas so we're just mapping in these clumps of the fur like so so we've got where i can see the darker shadows and the lighter bits are still left light. So now that I've mapped that in, I'm going to go in with the black again. And where I know it's dark, I'm just going to start applying harder pressure. And I'm going to really start darkening this black up now. Now again, this is the sort of area where you could go straight in with black because it's dark. I don't because I like to have those colours showing through. Um, as I've mentioned before, I like the black in the polychromos is very translucent. So you're going to see these colours through the fur and that's what's adding extra depth. Now you can, again, go straight in with the black. It is a black area um, and then you could glaze over the top with like these blues. It just depends on the method that you want to use and how you want your work to look. You don't have to follow my methods. This is just how I do it. Um, I just want to show... The purpose of my tutorials are to show you how I do it and the colours I see, how I layer, um, things like that, and approach a, a subject of a dog. But I also want you to be able to take away tips and tricks and then apply them to your own method. So if you if you want to go in with a black pencil straight away, uh, then do it. Don't think that what I'm saying is the only way that you can do it. Um, I want you to take these like tips and tricks and my techniques and incorporate them in a way that helps you and your work. Right, and then I'm going to get the paints grey. Again, harder pressure now, blending over some of this black. Just to darken this bit of fur up now. Um, I'm then going to get the, I want the warm grey 5, so I've got the um, warm grey 5 and I'm just going to come over here because we're going to, it's going to go a bit lighter down here is this, well it's black fur but it does look grey, <laughs> it looks like a blue tone so I'm just going to come over with this warm grey 5 here and then back to the dark sepia just to darken along here like this brownish it's like a brownish grayish tone this dark sepia is giving to the fur here and then if you need to darken any areas um again just keep layering so this is the Payne's gray may go back over with the um black as well Black again. Okay. 
just blend into these areas. I'm just going to create some of these loose, finer hairs. It just needs to be a bit darker under this part of his chin. Line that up. Sorry if the camera's moving. I'm trying to get it more stable. I hope the lighting's been a lot better this way at the time. Um, okay, so that's part of the black fur. So let's just um, keep coming down his fur. So I'm going to get, again, the one grey two. Now, a lot of this is covered by the white fur. Um, what we're going to do is... Um, I'm going to kind of ignore... The fact that there's so much white fur coming over this black marking. Because I'm going to go in with a slice tool. Which I might need more layers here to be able to do the slice tool. Um, I'm not too worried about all this white fur. Again, if you're using... Um, if you don't have the slice tool, use your indenting tool. And before you apply your base layer, go in with your indenting tool. And um, map out some of these white furs. need to taper some of these edges because it's very soft fur looking here, very wispy. And again, I've not erased my graphite lines because it's going to be dark, it's uh, black fur. into there a bit more. Make sure I've got everything covered with this base layer. Okay. And then got the um dark indigo. Come in with this dark indigo first. Along here. And it's sort of lightening off at the edges, so I'm just very gently going to bring it up. But I think we may use like a cold grey to give that blue tinge at these edges. So keep the dark indigo sort of towards the edge here. Okay, um, and then I'm going to take the um, warm grey 6 and I'm going to come over the top of all of this. Two minutes. Sorry, I just got a drink. So, uh, warm grey 6 um, along all up here. And again, I'm tapering these edges. It's getting quite light at the edges. Um, we will blend all of this in nicely, um, but it is getting lighter along the edges. And more bluish toned. Now, I, I should have asked this before, um, so I may leave the bottom part here, um, which is white anyway, but um, 
do you guys want to learn how I fade the portraits? Um, so in my portrait work, I, I like faded neckline. Do you want to learn how I do that? Um, or do you want like a straight line? Um, if you let me know, um, I will film the next part with that in mind. Or, or when we come to doing the bottom areas. Um, let me know which one you'd prefer, a fading neckline or a straight edged line. I'm still learning how I'm how to perfect the fading neckline, but um, I'm getting there. <laughs> we can learn together. Okay, um, so I'm going to get the warm grey free again over the top. Now this seems weird that I'm going like lighter with the colours, but it's sort of it's helping to blend these pigments together. Um, and then I can still go over with the darker. I'm not using these lighter colours to create this lighter area. I'm using them to help blend the pigments together. Obviously, in coloured pencil we do light to dark when we're applying our colours. Um, we can't usually get light over um, the dark areas. Okay, I'm going to get the paints grey again. So I'm just coming, adding a few more layers here. And then I'm going to bring it down into that area that we've um, started on. So it's coming down here. And then it's coming here. So I'm trying to, um, I think the uploads to this tutorial, I'm trying to get them to be um, on Monday, Wednesday and a Friday. Try my best. <laughs> Obviously, it depends on how busy I've been. Um, I'm currently just getting the last lot of Christmas commissions done. Um, so the next week or so, they may have to take precedent, obviously. Um, but I am trying to get this tutorial done. And then I'm looking forward to seeing if anybody's followed along. I'm looking forward to seeing your finished results. Okay, I'm going to get the coal grey 2 now. And the coal grey 2 is going to come along the edges. It's going to give that nice blue effect. So I'm going to get uh, the black and I'm not going to press hard but just kind of glazing it in these darker shadowed areas that I can see. And sort of giving some of these flyaway hairs drawn in. Um, I'm going to come in with the Tombow Mono Zero eraser and just clean the edge of mine. Um, and I'm sort of, I'm going to bring it in like this. And I'm just going to create some of these softer lines, but gaps between this fur. Um, and then I've got, what's that? That's one grey five, just to help with these wisp bits again. And then the Tombow. Just going to create some extra depth down here, but softness because it's very, very soft. Okay, get my brush. May have to use the putty eraser there. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. Um, and then the Payne's Grey again, just over the top. So I've gone over this quite a lot because we want those layers. We need a lot of layers so that the um, slice tool will work. Oops, found my elbow. Right, we... I'm 
just going to go over the top again all this with the one grey two applying fairly harder pressure again just to help blend the pigment and add another layer to all of this and I, I do like the one grey two um, you can see how it just sort of it blends these colours nicely together it's sort of like all the pigment just blends really smoothly together with the one grey two <laughs> you can just see how soft that looks now and again, I'm just going to do it here. Just an extra layer. And help blend that pigment in together. Like so. Right. going to see if I've got enough layers for this slice tool. So I'm using... Uh, this is the slice tool that I use with the orange blade. I also have a finer point. Um, but I think this is the one that we want. And I'm just going to add in this, see if we can add in this whisker. Yeah. So we've got enough layers. Um, I've added in that one whisker there. And this is where we start adding some of these extra details in. I'm just going to really make this piece pop. I always clean the edge um, when I've used it. You see how we're starting to get some of these whiskers in and then it means that like get some of these white hairs coming in across here um, I'm going to get the white polychromos uh, and with the white polychromos I'm just going over where these whiskers are in that slice tool line I want these whiskers to be more defined than the fur lines so I'm Going in with this white polychromos and it's going to create like just extra definition. You see now how we can really see those whisker lines. And then we can just brush away that pigment. I can see that pigment's fallen off there. Um, and then come back in with a slice tool. And I'm just going to add some of these hairs, white fur hairs. Um, use the brush. You can use the brush or you could use like the putty razor um, to pick up this pigment that it's leaving behind. Oops, that's not the slice tool. <laughs> just need to clean that. But it's just going to create this really soft looking fur. So you can start to see that you're getting that detail within there. Um, so I'm not going to keep going with the slice tool. I want this white fur in and then I can blend the two together using the slice tool. But it just shows that um, when we come to using the slice tool, we have enough layers down. And it's going to create the effect that we want. Also with the slice tool, if you don't like what's happened, say here, I can come back in with this black pencil over the top. And I can just go over near that way that whisker is. I can come over and I can go, yeah, I didn't like that. Um, and then I can repeat repeat the layers later on and go, okay, let's restart again. So I'm just darkening this with the Payne's Grey. Um, a bit too light there. Just where I went in with that putty eraser. have to be careful, it does lift the pigment. Um, okay, so let's get some more of this white fur in by the collar. Um, when I say collar, I mean like the collar of the dog, the scruff. Um, right, so this area is quite cool by the black fur. So I'm going to actually go in with the warm, uh, the cold grey too. That wasn't right, was it? This area is quite cool. Let's go in with the warm. No, <laughs> cold grey too. Um, along this edge here. And it is going to come back into that warm colour, but I want this area to be cooler in tone. Um, to about here, I think. So this is the cold grey. 
may mix um, the warm grey over the top anyway. So this is the base layer of the cold grey. It's very cold at the moment. Um, I'm going to get the warm grey warm. And it's going to mix over the top of that cold grey there. Now again, I'm looking at the reference photo, so it's coming down from the chin. So there's a shadow here, but then that chin comes down and blends into this fur. And that's what we want our piece to look like it's doing. We want it to blend. Um, and then I'm going to get the gold. I'm going to come over. Very gently, and again here, very lightly with the gold. Just where it's blending around. And you can see how that gold, even though it's a metallic colour, it's giving a nice greyish colour. That's the colour that I want to utilise from this metallic. Um, I'm going to get the cold grey very lightly here, over the top there. Um, and then again, very lightly with the gold, start bringing it into here and over that silver, oh, uh, silver. Wow, words are hard for me today, over that cold grey. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. Um, and then I've got the warm grey too, and I'm just going to go over this. Again, I'm blending into that darker area and I will come back and add these darker strokes in again. But it's just going to help with the sliced tool. Everything's going to nicely blend together. Follow that fur direction. And go over the top of that gold there as well. Um, I'm going to get the cold grey two and I'm just going to blend here. And then back with it there. Right, um, and I'm going to use the warm grey one again, coming down here. So we'll we'll do like this part, get this mapped in, um, and then if you let me know if you want to do a straight lined edge or a faded edge. And then the next part, we will um, get this faded edge or straight line done and then work our way um, on the rest of the piece. We're getting there, though. Still got quite a bit of white fur to do. But he's coming together nicely now. I'm really excited for this piece. When he's finished. So this is the one grey one as a base layer. Um, and then just going to sharpen my warm grey two. So I've got the warm grey two now, and I'm just going to bring. Again, we're following this fur direction. It's coming down and round here. Blend here. I'm just going to get the cold grey two because it is a bluish tone here. And I'm just going to blend over the top of that warm grey two into there. Get the Payne's grey. And just adding more layers. The more layers, the better for the slice tool. So don't be afraid to just keep building up those layers. So, right. And then the one grey one again. Let's get this part of his um, neck in. So I'm going to have to raise that graphite line in a minute. Um, where's my putty eraser gone? Uh, so this is the warm grey one as a base layer. 
I'm going to have to sharpen this in a minute. I really need to put it in a pencil extender. Um, So, get the gold, very lightly again, and following this fur direction. And this is quite a dark patch here. Don't worry if you get any of these like harsher lines um, as you're applying it. It's just going to give you like the effect of fur, like this is a dark shadow within the fur. Um, and that's perfectly fine. So we're just curving this round now. So now these, these tutorials are getting a bit longer. Um, but I hope it's helpful. Um, I will stop this one soon. Um, just so I know whether we're doing a faded outline or not. Um, I should have asked before and then we could have just done the whole chest in this one. Um, I think the next tutorial though we'll finish his chest and then we'll come down his face. Um, if we come, yeah, so the next tutorial will come, we'll finish this chest and this section of the black fur. Um, and then it'll be an ear and then it'll be finishing off. So maybe three, another three or four tutorials and we, we may have finished this guy. So I know it's been a long, a long tutorial, um, but I hope it's been helpful. I know I say this all the time. This is my first tutorial that I've done though. So um, if there's anything you'd like changing, do let me know. Um, I do want to try and be as helpful as I can to everybody. Oh, sorry, this was the um, one grey two over the um, gold that we've just applied. Just going to get the one grey three here. As well. Um, I can see, I can still see this green. Um, and the copper hasn't created the tone that I want. So I'm going to get my... Earth green. Uh, so this is the earth green, and I'm very lightly just along the bottom of this chin, where I can see this green. Now I don't want this to be right in your face because we're not adding a background. It's going to be a white background, and obviously out of context, you don't realise that he's stood on grass. But I do want just this hint of green. Which is why I've gone with the earth green. It's quite a nice muted green. Um, and I'm just going to add it underneath his chin here. Just along this darker line. Very lightly. There's also like a yellowish tone. Just very lightly, um, and then I'm gonna get the brown ochre very lightly. Um, go over that yeah, earth green. Now, you want to be very, very gentle with this brown ochre, you don't want it to be yellow, uh, yellow, you don't want it to be um, as in your face as the other colors, but we just want this subtle hint. Coming round. And then the warm grey too. I'm just going to go again over the top to blend everything in. like so okay yeah i'm happy with that so back to the warm gray one 
There's a base layer along here. And it's coming around for here as well, where we've got this connection with the black fur, which we will do next time. Um, it's not; it doesn't need to be as blended as like the muzzle, which is helpful. <laughs> um, I'm going to get the cold grey too. Bit of a bluish tone here. This is the cold grey too. Um, and then the warm grey too. And again, it's always following this fur direction. Longer pencil strokes because it's coming into the longer fur. And then the gold. So the golds I'm kind of using for like the shadowed areas in between all this fur. And then going again over the top of that with the warm grey too to help. Um, blend. There's also a bit of a cooler tone here, so we're gonna just use the cold grey too here. And then the warm grey too over the top of all that. Um, like so. Okay, so I think we'll leave him here for now um, because um, I'll find out what you want to do with the um, edge, whether we want a faded edge or a straight edge. Um, and then when I know what you would prefer, um, we will finish the chest and this part of his face, so coming down here. Um, and then, yeah, we're, we're getting there with him. So if I zoom you out, we can see that we're getting there with him. He's really coming along nicely. So next time, um, like I say, we will finish this chest and we'll get the slice tool in to uh, get this nice blend between the white and the dark fur. Finish his chest and we'll finish this half of his face uh, with the black fur. Um, I think this ear will be a tutorial in its own because it's quite large and there's a lot to do. Um, and then we'll finish the back part of him so we are very close to him being finished um another three or four tutorials i think and we will be done we may need to darken some of this as we come down the chest again it's a bit of a back and forth what we need to darken final details like whiskers that we need to add um but we're getting there so i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it's helped any questions do let me know and I will see you all in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.